Let's look at the four factors that make up the torque capacity of a clutch. First two are really simple. The first one is the number of surfaces. On a single disc, that would be two, one on each side of the disc. A twin disc would be four, and well, you get the idea. Uh, the second uh, factor would be the radius of gyration, which is basically, it represents the size of the clutch. And what, you're, what we're doing is we're measuring the radius to, of the center of the friction material. And uh, we want that in feet because the, the end result is going to be in, in uh, foot pounds. So uh, that's radius of gyration. So next is coefficient of friction. Now coefficient of friction is the sliding resistance of the mating surfaces. And that's determined by the friction material that's put onto the, the clutch disc. The factor we use for, uh, for organic material is 0.25, and it, it's pretty standard. You'll see that uh, from some of the uh, factories that, that manufacture clutches. But that might be a little conservative for, for our clutches because we, have, we do have a pretty aggressive uh, friction material. Now, what's, what's uh, nice about an organic material is that it is long-lasting, it's smooth engaging, it's kinder to the mating surfaces, uh, but it has its limits in terms of heat capacity. When it gets hot, the resins that hold the material together uh, will tend to melt, and, uh, and then the coefficient goes down, so now it's not going to hold the power it needs to. Anyway, that's, that's the limitation of the organic material. And uh, next you have the cerametallics. Bring over our six pad here. <clears throat> the ceramic materials, obviously it's heavier because it's metal, but it's a blend of, of, you know, of ceramic, uh, carbon, uh, different metals, whether it's iron or, car or uh, copper. You can see this one has a lot of copper in it, uh, maybe bronze. And, uh, th and that blend will make up uh, the coefficient and the, the characteristics in, in terms of the the heat capacity, the uh, durability of the material, and uh, you know, just, just all the different parameters. Uh, we use uh, the number of 0.32 in our calculations for the ceramic. There again, that might be a little bit conservative because we have kind of stepped it up over the years, uh, finding different materials that we like. And currently, uh, the material we have are really happy with in terms of the torque capacity. Uh, it does hold a lot of power, and yet it's still fairly smooth engaging. Still, I wouldn't want to put this on a streetcar. It's more of a race clutch. Um, now, this one has six pads, which tends to be pretty heavy, but it, has, it can take a lot of abuse and, and absorb a lot of heat. Uh, for some racing applications, you might want to ditch the spring center and go solid center and just use four buttons. This will hold the same amount of power, or torque, but, um, but it's much lighter. So if, you, if you're not going to uh, slip the clutch a lot or you have a really light vehicle, race vehicle, this might be better suited for the application. Okay, we also have our centered iron. Centered iron, I think, uh, I think we're using 0 0.42 as the, as the coefficient in our calculations. It might be a little higher than that. I know that's a conservative number. But centered iron, uh, because it's centered right onto the plate, it, uh, it, it is a, a fairly heavy material. Uh, it can take a lot, of, a lot of abuse, and it has a very high coefficient of friction. We use this on our small race clutches. We don't tend to use it on bigger clutches because it is heavy. And uh, the drive plate uh, cannot be heat treated because it's the material centered right onto it, so it would end up taking the heat treat right out of it. Clamp load, or clamping force, is the amount of force that the pressure plate puts on the assembly to clamp it all together. Within the pressure plate, there's, there's only two ways to gain more clamp load, and that is either through the diaphragm spring or by changing the geometry or the fulcrums within the, the clutch cover. So the clutch cover assembly or pressure plate uh, has fulcrums here that, that the diaphragm pivots off of and it pushes down on the casting on this fulcrum here. This diaphragm spring pushes down on that fulcrum. 
So you can either have a stiffer spring, and the penalty there would be that you feel it at the foot. You'll have a, a stiffer pedal. Uh, or you can change the geometry and move the fulcrum in. Usually it's on the casting, that's why I'm pointing that out, but they'll change the fulcrum point on the casting. And now you don't have a penalty of a stiffer pedal. Instead, you have a shorter clutch life and it, uh, it won't lift the casting as far when you do actuate the clutch because you basically you're giving it uh, more clamp load but over a shorter distance. So the clutch isn't going to last as long and it's going to have kind of a muddy feel if that's all you're doing. And there are different methods we've seen. Uh, you know, you can put a, you can, if you're altering a standard casting, uh, you can machine it out and put a, a ring. I've seen some that are welded up and remachined, which is kind of crude. <laughs> uh, one company, they machine off the whole fulcrum and they put, drill holes and put ball bearings in there, but it accomplishes the same thing. All you're doing is changing the geometry. If that's all you're doing, it's, it, it's pretty limited on how far you can go. Uh, in this case, on this Jeep clutch, what we've done is we just make a new casting. Uh, we kind of wanted a heavier... Uh, casting with more surface area, so we, we wanted to produce a casting anyway. So we cut the fulcrum where we want it, and then we mate that with our own diaphragm spring. So we have a little change in geometry here and a little change in the spring itself, and we're able to get a generous uh, increase in clamp load and uh, you know hold a lot of power without, without the trade-offs of doing just one or just doing the other. I realized I left out a third element that can increase the clamp load of a pressure plate, and that would be through centrifugal assist. Uh, on uh, drag race clutches and like tractor pull clutches, they're meant to slip, and they put weights that will actually, uh, it increases the clamp load at higher RPM. So at lower RPM, the clutch is slipping, at higher RPM, it will grab hold, and that's to keep the tires from breaking loose. Now that's not really important on a street application. On a, uh, on a street application, you don't want that clutch to slip all by itself. And if you think about it, you know the torque of an engine uh, is is pretty flat. Horsepower goes up, but torque does not. And the clutch really only uh, sees uh, torque. So at higher RPM, it's it doesn't do any good to have extra torque capacity. You, it really, it's almost more important to have it at lower RPM when you're trying to grab the next gear on an upshift. So anyway, it's, it's just something to think about, but um, I thought I'd add that in. So those are the four factors that determine the torque capacity of a clutch. Hopefully you've learned that it's really not that complicated and there, there's only a few things you can do to, uh, to alter the torque capacity. And each one kind of has its benefits and trade-offs. So uh, we've shared some of our experience and uh, there's a whole lot more, but uh, I think that's good enough for now. So thank you for watching.